after e4, c5, knight f3, knight c6, and then bishop to b5, the Rosalimo is on the board. In this video, we're going through uh, pawn to e6. Now here we take the knight immediately. And I'm going to both do a video about this and about this. So b and d taking the bishop. So let's start from b takes. Now, immediate move is e5. The idea is simple. Stop the pawn from the, the d pawn from reuniting with the other pawns and take. So let's look at a few ideas here so that we always know what to do against this setup. After d5, clearly here we take Ampasan, and after bishop takes back, queen takes back doesn't make much sense because you have to develop the bishop and then you're only able to go to e7 and after knight f6 it's kind of passive. But even either way, we have achieved what we wanted, which is this double isolated pawn, c5 and, D, uh, um, and c6. So now white continues with d3, and after knight f6, White plays the crucial move, bishop to g5. This is very simple. We gave away the bishop pair, and we don't want to go to an open end game whilst our opponent has got the bishop pair. So we have to take the dark square bishop. And in the, what have we achieved in that case? We've achieved that, yes, we gave away the bishop pair, but we're going to take it away from our opponent. But we have created this weakness, and we're going to be working on that. And that's how we're going to be winning the end game. So after bishop g5, pin in the knight, let's see how this goes on. Castle, knight b to d2. It's more accurate than knight c3 because from from this square, d2, you can access two different very important squares in this game. So let's see the idea here. If black plays h6, take the knight, and of course queen takes back because pawn takes back is crazy. Yes, in that case, black the black player will uh, retain the bishop pair, but he's gonna he's gonna be in trouble in the king side. So after queen takes f6, knight e4 we are now able to capture the bishop and so now we're attacking these two pieces either way the queen moves e7 well we're gonna take take and now we're going to the winning end game castle and now well there's lots of things that can happen now so let's see a few potential end games and then we're gonna go on to the next line so this bishop here has no future from a6 because it's just never going to go anywhere. And as seen in, in all the previous videos of this Rosolimo, of the bishop e6, a6, even if it happens, you have moves like b3 and the fact that the c pawn can never move. So that bishop becomes useless. So after e5, uh, allowing the development of this bishop, white plays rook to e1. Anyway, at this moment, uh, the bishop to g4 move cannot really be played. Simply because of bishop uh, of pawn to h h3, and then if if black takes and we're simplifying everything, and if black tries to complicate things by keeping the bishop in an open end game, then g4, bishop g6, and then this pawn is safe to be taken. Uh, if black just goes to h7, he has retained the bishop in an open end game, so maybe he can keep fighting. But still, queen to f3, attacking, uh, putting more pressure on c6, and after rook a2, uh, c8, protecting the pawn, knight c4, attacks the queen. And when the queen moves, obviously we're not going to swap in this position because this uh, double isolated pawn is the very reason why we're going to win. Queen to f4 is the best move. And white here just has an extra pawn, it's just winning. There's not many moves now, but like after rook to e8, for example, that's not possible because of knight d6. Or what else can black do to, you know, uh, if rook c to d8, then the best move by white is rook e7 and uh, uh, this game plays itself. If black plays f5, the most aggressive move. Again, rook to e7, and after pawn takes, allowing the bishop to get stronger, the rook to attack the queen, white takes back, threatening g7, and after the best move, which is queen to d4, last attempt by black to reunite the pawn structure here in the center, when in this case we accept it because take, take, but now after rook a to e1, again, this, this game plays itself. So in this position, we mentioned that, you know, like that free pawn that black gives in e5 is leading black nowhere. So let's say even after the bishop takes and queen takes and there's a simplification here and f5 the most aggressive move again white just simply plays it cool b3 so where's the advantage again the advantage will always be in these isolated pawns let's see how to transition to a comfortable end game after rook a to e8 white continues with rook e3 and white plays threatening you know rook um, e1 and queen e2 it's gonna have a lot of attackers to uh, e5 also there's a pawn attacking e4 after f4 attacking the rook, rook e4, right? you gotta keep the pressure on this pawn. And after rook to f6, developing the rook and preparing to reinforce, then queen h5 attacks the rook. This is just a potential endgame, of course. There's very few possibilities that this very game you'll play will go on exactly like this. But once you know the idea is to best manage this specific setup, then you can face it better.
So after rook to e6, preparing a massive defense over e5, so the white can never take it. White continues with this, so we are building our attack on the backward pawn. Uh, white will win because of the attack on the square uh, c5, which is inevitable. The idea, so let's say black plays queen to f7, uh, queen to e7, white best move is uh, king to f1, it's all about tempos. You're going to play queen e2, uh, f3, and queen f2, and rook c5, you're going to take this pawn, it's inevitable. Even if black plays, I don't know, something else, let's say rook a to uh, e7, then you can go for an attack already. You got these three pieces putting massive pressure over e5. After king f7, you play f3. And it's unstoppable. White player will be able to play queen f2, rook c5, and take the pawn here, no matter what. So let's make a recap. e4, c5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5, a, e6, then you take the knight immediately. We'll, in this video, we're looking at b takes. So e5 right now. And after d5, you take the pawn on person, and now bishop to d6 d3 and we're looking at knight f6 so we're gonna play bishop g5 immediately after castle knight to d2 so earlier we went through h6 attacking the bishop and we know what to do because we're gonna swap everything in this case let's go through bishop to e7 black is choosing to keep the the bishop pair at least is has it's got a worse pawn structure but here is the bishop pair Okay, now how to continue? Knight to e5, the idea of going to c6 and to do exactly what we clearly want to do. So after knight, uh, queen to c7, stopping the knight from moving here so the black can keep the bishops, white continues with this excellent move. Knight d to c4. So we've got the two knights now controlling a lot of squares in the center. So after h6 now, what to do? We cannot take the knight. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, black will be able to uh, just keep the bishop there forever and it, we're not really easily winning that end game so after h6 you play the bishop back to d2 now let's look at two main ideas let's remember that any attempt of simplification by black will be favorable for white in this case because of the pawn structure so in this situation let's look at two ideas knight d7 and bishop to a6 so after knight d7 you take and after queen takes bishop to c3 after black develops the rook rook to uh, b8 uh, putting the rook on an open file white continues with b3 so that we never have to worry about this pawn and after bishop to a6 only way to uh, develop this bishop carefully because earlier you, you noticed that the bishop could have taken back instead of the queen but then this pawn can never push because bishop c3 and the knights you know you can play queen e2 you can castle play the rook to e1 this pawn in e5 will have no future so after bishop to a6 white continues with queen to g4 thematic when there's a pawn in e6 now you're pinning it with threatening checkmate so obviously bishop f6 cannot be played so after f6 white now continues with long castle which looks a bit crazy but that's the best move remember the black player has an ugly pawn structure which means it cannot penetrate any possible way so these pawns are not going anywhere your king is actually safe so after bishop takes and d, d takes there's an attack on the queen and after queen to c8 in order to keep controlling the pawn in e6 White continues with rook to e1, putting more attack on it. And after e5, we're going to finish the line here, because here, uh, this is, these are all moves that are supposed to indicate how you should deal with this endgame. So e5 happens, you know, obviously because we were putting a lot of attack on e6, so you can, now you can swap, and this endgame is easily winning for white. So let's make a recap, recap because I think it's always good. And uh, bishop b5... And then e6, right? You take the knight, b takes, push the pawn in order to create this attack on d6. d5, you take, ampersand, right? So it takes with the bishop to develop, and now d3, knight f6. In the next video, we're going to go through the immediate h6. Uh, now we play bishop to g5, right? It's a crucial move. After castle, knight to d2, and after bishop e7. So this is the variation we're looking at now, because otherwise we will take, take, you know, queen takes, and then knight e4. We've seen that before. So after bishop e7, Knight e5 attacking the pawn in c6, queen, uh, queen to c7, knight c4. And after h6, now we have no reason to take, obviously, as we explained already, so bishop d2. Earlier we went through knight to d7. What happens after bishop to a6 now? Just an idea. There's not much difference, though. White can castle. And after rook b8, white continues with bishop to a5 attacking the queen. And queen moves away, queen to c8, still keeping an eye on c6 pawn. Because right now the white player is simply desperate for trading. The more we trade, the even easier it gets. White continues with b3, so that we don't worry about this pawn. This pawn structure like this is always good against this Rosolimo, against the classical Sicilian when you play the Rosolimo. And now, after the move knight to d5, this is a type of move we haven't seen. 
in these positions. How to deal with this? And we can take advantage by playing queen to g4. The ideas here will be bishop to d2, h4, all of these moves are coming. If white were to play again, you will play these moves. You will also play rook a to e1 and then put it in d2 and then rook to e1. Uh, you will do all of this. Of course, let's see, you know, if black plays, for instance, bishop to f6, funny enough, knight d6 traps the queen. So that's what happens when your knights are very well placed. If if black plays, uh, I don't know, let's look at this move, queen to b7. White plays this crucial and thematic move, which is rook a to c1, because you know that the black knight is trying to go to b4 and then have double attack here. And we want to play a3 without losing the c2 pawn. So rook a to c1, and after knight to b4, a3. Now you know how to deal with it. Knight to d5, rook f to e1. And black's just got no moves, right? Uh, after knight to f6 attacking the queen, queen to g3. We keep putting pressure on the file of the king. So let's just see one line on how to continue this endgame. If it goes like, let's say, for example, black takes the knight with the bishop. Then we take back with the d pawn. We leave this amazing knight in e5. And after bishop to d6, pinning the knight and preparing knight d7 maybe, and then potentially f6, white plays rook c to d1, attacking the bishop. Let's just play a, a, a couple more moves and then we will close this. Queen to e7 to protect the bishop is not possible, obviously, because knight c6, yes, you lose the queen, but then you have a Zwischen Zug attacking the queen with a check. What happens if bishop takes the extremely strong knight we have? Okay, then queen e5, and we are threatening to finally start taking advantage of the weakness so this pawn in c5 is being attacked so you know queen a6 or something whatever you just take the pawn right so if black plays knight to d7 attacking the queen and defending the pawn it looks very natural move then queen to d6 with a double attack on the knight and black cannot defend it with the rook because we have a bishop attacking there in d8 so after knight to b6 you see how black can't move anything what's this move now is bishop to c3 and then white intends to play queen to e5, threatening, you know, checkmate and exploiting the weakness on the pawn e6 whenever f6 moves. So let's go on a few more moves and then that will be it. So rook b to d8 attacking the queen, queen e5. And now we threaten checkmate, uh, checkmate in here. So f6, which is the best move by black, there was nothing else to do. Queen check, king h8. And now white wins by playing this move. Rook takes rook, rook takes. Clearly here we have a, a familiar tactic, right? Bishop takes back. Pawn takes, then queen takes, and then you can recapture the rook and go to winning endgame. So yeah, let's make a recap here. So uh, not a bishop to b5, e6, and now we take the knight. Pawn takes, the b-pawn now, e5. After d5, we take en passant, bishop d6, d3, knight f6, bishop g5. What happens if black doesn't castle but plays h6 immediately? Now here we retreat the bishop to h4. And nothing really changes from the previous scenarios. We still have the same plans, right? Knight b2, knight e4, and uh, you know, either take the bishop or. So here, let's look at two scenarios: g5 and what to do next, and queen to c7, which is kind of thematic in these positions. But still, you can just do the uh, bishop takes, pawn takes, and now black has an attack, you know, on the g file soon enough, and these two pieces aiming at the king side. Anyway, white now continues with knight to d2, and after rook to g8. White continues with g3, so we don't have to worry at all about anything. b6, white continues with queen to e2, and after rook to b8 attacking the pawn here. All these moves seems to make just so, so much sense. Of course, black couldn't really castle anywhere safe. White continues with knight to b3, and uh, black has achieved nothing, because again, we are still going to go for a better endgame due to this double isolated pawn. There's really not much. What can black do? You can't really uh, make the king safe. Why? The queens are still on the board. Um, let's look at this idea, f5, the idea of playing f4. Also, because black, black has no moves, right? The bishop can't move anywhere. Uh, b5, he, he just attack it again, so it doesn't make sense. c4 is not going anywhere. You can, you can take it. Um, the h-pawn is not going anywhere. You can just take it with the knight. This bishop is not going to be able to attack this knight. Our king is safe. So after f5, let's say long castle. And then f4, white ignores it and plays rook h to e1. And honestly, the position is like evaluated almost plus 4 or something. B white has a plan of playing knight to d2, knight f to d2, and then queen h5, right? And the game plays itself. 